Robert Enright joins me now for tonight's edition of Heartland, and we're looking at the work of Diana McIntosh, and I like the name already. Nice name, in fact, she, you know, she's played everywhere from the Carnegie Recital Hall in New York to small venues here in Winnipeg. She's been doing this for 30 years now, Diana McIntosh, and in those 30 years, she's composed some 60 pieces for piano and voice and various other things. And just next week, she takes her one-woman show on a 14-city Eastern Canadian tour. Watch the fence, watch the flares, I watch both, and take off into the night. The first musical involvement probably was when I, when I used to go down stairs and my mother had the old-fashioned washing machines where, they, where the thing would go, and I, she said I stood there and did this for ages to the rhythm. Isn't that funny? Diana McIntosh is a classically trained pianist. She studied at the Royal Conservatory in Toronto and has a music degree from the University of Manitoba. She was good at playing the piano, but she was never entirely satisfied by classical music. In the blind line. All the time I was playing classical concert, I, concerts, I kind of... I didn't feel totally comfortable, but I felt I wanted to really communicate with an audience with my voice and with movement and so forth. And I think that, that theatrical, that theatricality was kind of in, in a holding pattern for many years. Her compulsion to communicate has led her down a musical path few classically trained musicians end up on. Macintosh is more likely to be seen playing odd instruments, or playing normal instruments oddly, or doing just about anything to get people to listen to her music. I mean, was there any apprehension at all when you decided that you would begin to stretch the boundaries a little? No. Surprisingly, I didn't have any qualms about it. I remember some of my friends were shocked when I wrote a little piece with, for a mouth percussion and toy piano. It was a way back, one of the first things I did. And I wasn't shy about doing that. I think because it was, I finally was at, was uh, was able to express myself in, in with with all of my being, and uh, and that was extremely satisfying to me. Amazingly enough, the first piece I wrote that was totally theatrical. Um, I didn't kind of have to work into it, it was uh, Elliptosonics, and that's a piece that um, is, uh, w was triggered by reading avant-garde program notes about an avant-garde concert and the, the, the uh, program notes that are incomprehensible and don't help at all, you know, and it, it starts out... Uh, the piece can be divided into three principal sections. Each section can be subdivided into three statements, each statement into three phrases, each phrase into three primary segments, and finally, each segment into three highly significant choral motifs. <laughs> now, this may sound like oversimplification. You know, are you a composer, a, a, a perform mm -hmm. multimedia artist? Are you a performance artist? Are you a, a, a pianist? I mean, or are you all of those things? I think I'm all of those things, and I can't, that it, it on the one hand, it, why should people be categorized? And I don't really want to be. On the other, I have to, like many North American artists, I have to promote myself. And it's very hard to know exactly how, in what little way I'm going to, in what way I'm going to show what I do. Should I promote myself as a pianist, as a composer, as a performance, performance artist, as an actress? Uh, it depends where I'm trying to get a gig. <laughs> copy, 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 copy. Do you ever worry that people don't take you seriously? Uh, it is a bit of a problem in a way because I really, I really feel very passionately about things, and I and uh, take things an awful lot of things very seriously, and I and I and I've written an awful lot of. Um, really quite serious works and I love writing really serious works and I think it's the other side of me. I think there are two sides. 
That other side has emerged in Beryl Markham into the night, her most recent piece. It's about the legendary aviator who, in 1936, became the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic. Ahead of me lies a land that is unknown to the rest of the world, and only vaguely known to the African. A strange mixture of grasslands, scrub, desert sand like long waves of the southern ocean. I would like to do some more um, dramatic, serious works where I actually portray a specific character. The, the Beryl Markham work that I wrote is the first piece where I really assume another character. Air takes me into its realm. Night envelops me entirely, leaving me out of touch with the earth. I don't want to be taken as a comic relief. I think I express uh, a sense of joy and wit and humor that is part of life, that's a natural part of life, but I want to balance that with everything else. I can say that she doesn't want to be pigeonholed into any one category, but I think we could safely say she's not mainstream. No, she certainly isn't. You know, she, she has such tremendous fun doing this. I mean, one of the things that I've always remarked upon in looking at her things is that she's out there having a very good time, as does the audience. She's found that a little bit of a trap, and you can see that her career is now making a kind of shift, and I think she wants to do uh, more serious pieces in which she's more an actor and performer than just a, a kind of comedian, because she has enormous talent and can do just about anything with the, that instrument, the piano and her voice. So What a history of work, though. It, 60 pieces is. Yeah, she uh, goes back 30 years in this town, actually. She's kind of the, the queen mother of avant-garde music in Winnipeg, and I, she's really quite a character. She's a delightful person to be around. Sounds good. What's up next week? Next week, we're going to look at Steve Bell. We're going to look at a kind of Christian rocker who's also trying to make a shift in his career and move from a rather narrow world of, of Christian rock into a more mainstream world. Sounds good. It's going to be very good, actually, to find voice. I'll see you then. Okay. <laughs>